Let's be honest, we've all made mistakes, and hopefully our mistakes will help you avoid those mistakes. The first point I want to make is a lack of preparation. If you fail to prep for your session, there's a real worry that there'll be a silence and you just, um, you won't know where to go. There'll be inconsistent and confusing storytelling, unbalanced encounters, and a lack of engagement for all the players. Knowing how much to prep is a debate. For each session, I would have two NPCs, two monsters, and ideally two locations, perhaps. You need a skeleton amount to get through the two, three, four hour session. Random tables will help you out the rest of the way, but it's best to have those random things done beforehand, ideally, if you're new to DMing. I think it's a bit like a muscle. You do less prep when you've had more experience, more confidence. Railroading is when the characters are forced down a specific path, which limits their agency and totally disregards their creative input. You need story structure. You need, you start in the tavern, you go over this mountain top and you get to the big bad in the cave. That's a through line. That's okay. As long as there's a thousand ways the players can get from A to B. And they can literally backtrack and go somewhere else for five sessions. Know your start and know your end. The middle, it's a murky ground. And no matter what the players do, you will be able to get them where you want them. But they need to spread their wings on the journey. If the DM misinterprets a rule, that could lead to unfair rulings. Where somebody can't get to do something they would have been able to do, for example. Again, it's unbalanced gameplay, because all these rules are right, and then when the rogue tries to stun somebody, you misunderstand the rule and it just can't do its thing. That can be terribly frustrating for players. But it's, I think it's okay to make mistakes. And if someone else brings up the mistake, give it five minutes, read the rule, and say, yep, yeah, fair enough, I know going forward. That's all right, it's okay to be wrong, but a misrule can kill the passion. Now some rules, you might just say, I don't like that rule, I'm twisting it to this. That's all right. Try and be clear. So guys, this is how I rule it. I'm aware that it's different, but this is my game. That's all right, but getting it completely wrong at the, at the expense of a character's move, that's bad. Now this next one is also difficult. If you've got a player who is really good at RP or is the first in the combat and they seem to be getting all the attention, the favouritism, then that's going to suck for the quieter people. You need to think of them like spinning plates. Yeah, he's good and he might always come to the thing first. But look at the other members. Take the attention to them. Give them a chance. They might not take the bait, but as long as you give them a chance and say, look, I gave you your scene. This guy over here, what's he doing? But then don't forget about him. It's a lot of that. You're doing that all the time. But if you're always just having a dialogue with that one person or asking them to do the roles, the little guys are not going to be happy. At least check with them if they're all right with it. The next mistake is having a lack of player engagement, which isn't really your fault, but you need to address it. You sat there playing some app on your phone. You need to be immersed in the story. You don't know what's going on. You're not listening. Is it the story? Is it my fault? Is it something you need from from the game and me to make you pay attention? Some people ban phones at the table. That's not me. Because generally speaking, people are looking up their spells or options. And sometimes in combat, I can be tempted to look on Facebook if I'm a player, but I do stop myself out of it because it's kind of disrespectful. It's like playing a board game with the family and then really you're watching YouTube at the same time. It's like, come on, concentrate on this. But that's a problem you can be, you can fix. Fix it in private with that player. Now this one, this is the DM. You are the NPCs. If you're plucking different attitudes, contradictory personalities, behaviours, motivations maybe, then the players are going to be like, who is this character? How do I talk to him? Because one minute he's all right with us doing it and the next he's not. One minute he's got this accent, the next he's got that accent. What's his deal? If you do an NPC, make a note, put a name, whatever comes out of your mouth, put a note of what he's wearing, a little key phrase. Does he stutter? Does he say um a lot? When you next play that, you look at it and you go, okay, I do remember. He was Scottish. Now, not everybody needs their backstory using in your game. After all, it's your game, your story. But if you've agreed to interact with a backstory or suggested that you will, make sure you do. Because they, they players get very attached to 
their backstory and motivation. If, they, if they've taken the time to write out a long list, all you need to do is feed them 10 minutes of, hey, this is all to do with your backstory, they'll be happy. Another mistake is putting overpowered enemies up against the party. Now, I am split on this mistake. For beginners, you put against them what they should manage. Absolutely. But when you've played for four years, and you know all the stats, disregard this rule. You surprise your characters. You can give them a red dragon against a level one character and manipulate the damage. Hold back on the moves. But if you're not well versed, don't let them fight monster after monster that they absolutely cannot beat. They're the heroes. They want to feel heroic. They want to win and also you want to let them get attached to their character in higher and higher levels and then kill them. Now lack of pacing is a mistake. You might be really excited about your fight that's coming up and just whisk them from here a thousand miles away. Oh the next thing you know you turn up there and then you're in and there's a fight. That's deleted so many options of what the players could do. Likewise, if you're trundling along, well, it's four days and we're going to play out each day and each hour in real time. The pacing's off. On long journeys, I, te I tend to think two instances happen on the way from A to B. Could be a battle, could be a fight, could be just discovering an interesting place that you can describe. A sense that there could be something here, but there isn't. But you need to think about the start of the session, the end of the session, a couple of spots in between, pacing. Set a timer behind the DM screen every hour and think, OK, we've been here stood waiting to go through this door for an hour. It's time to say somebody opens the door from the other side. The final mistake today is poor communication. Players sit with a blank screen of your world. You paint it, you describe it. They get their, their version of the image in their head. But you need to, especially with doors and staircases, look, you see some doors that way. If you turn one way, you see these stairs going upwards. There's a balcony, there's some animated armour over there, there's something over there. There's a, it's like you need to make sure and go over it and over it until they can sort of picture it. If they can't picture it, there's no immersion, it's dead. They walk up to something and you go, ha ha, stood on a trap. And you go, oh, you fell down that massive hole. Well, I wouldn't have, would I? Because if it's massive, I'd have seen it. I didn't realise there was a hole there. These are just things to think about. Getting things wrong is fine at first. But you need to be getting better and better and better. And these are the sticking points to look out for. If you fail to adequately, if you fail to adequately, if you fail to adequately prepare, if you fail to do enough prep, what's the point you're making? Forces the characters down a specific 